Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episode three of A Place Further Than the Universe. It feels like I've already done three episodes, but no, I've already done two. I've only done two of this one. And I think the one that, I think the reason why it confused me so much, at least one of the reasons, would be that the last episode we did of this series, I fucked up on, well, more like my OBS fucked up somehow, and it didn't record my audio. And as such, I just ended up having to do just a straight review because the reaction itself was unusable. Um, so I, I, I think that's why it feels like I've done three. But at the same time, it almost feels like, uh, I don't know, it feels like we've had more content than we have. Um, I'm enjoying this so far, though. I, I like our characters. I like the story. I'm just not sure where it's going to head. <sighs> because... Last time, we got introduced to Hinata, and I, I enjoy her so far. And at the very end of the last episode, we uh, got a glimpse of our fourth character in the group. The thing is, I don't know like, exactly what we're going to do with her so far, because it's like it's just introducing these characters really quickly, and I'm just feeling like, I don't know, I feel like it would be better to hold off on a little bit of that. Um... It's only so many episodes, but at the same time, it's like you don't want to rush every little thing and then have to like kind of meander about for a little bit, because that's never a good thing. <laughs> um, but I, I have hopes for this, and I really hope that it just goes in a really good direction with the, all of it and handles its episode count and pacing well. <sighs> Sorry for all the yawning, by the way. I'm not really tired, so I don't know why I'm yawning so much. But either way, uh, not really much else to say. I don't know anything about what's to come. Uh, I don't know really much of any spoilers for this show. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know where we're going to go with this episode or what's coming next. I don't know who this new character is or what they're going to be about. So I guess we should just find out. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So you may have noticed the very end of the reaction, like... Right as I was uh, saying, you know, see you back at the redirect, um, I, I started to get emotional. And I, I want to explain why, because I, I want to talk about this before anything else. In this episode, multiple times, there was a specific phrase used. I could just die right now. It was used at the very beginning in the cold open. It was used... Uh, one or two times during the course of the episode, and then again at the end. At the beginning and during the course of the episode, it was used in a more negative light. In terms of, like, relating to, like, embarrassment and sorrow. And the cold open alone, specifically, was with our new character, whose name I, I don't have on point yet. <laughs> um, but our new character... Uh, at the very beginning in the cold open, is standing in the sun, looks really sorrowful as she uh, sweats and everything, and she just says, I could just die right now. And at that point in time, it's in reference to basically her terrible life. Having no friends, having bad luck trying to get friends because of her celebrity status, her mother trying to force her into this celebrity status, trying to force her into Antarctica where she doesn't want to go. But at the end, at the very end of the episode, uh, as they're sitting in the uh, Polar Museum or whatever it is, and they're looking at the, uh, uh, the simulated aurora, and talking about how they could be the first high school students to actually see it from Antarctica. She gleefully 
happily says the line again. But this time, in a very positive manner. This time, referencing how just knowing that, just being in this situation with these three other girls, she could die happy right now. She has found fulfillment. The things she's been looking for. Because it, it's not just friends. It's not just friends that she's wanted. Yes, that's the big aspect of it. But it's fulfillment. She grew up, basically from the time she could talk, being a celebrity. She's never had the chance to form meaningful relationships with anyone outside of her mother. And even then, she's kind of resented her mother for forcing her into this life. She's lived her entire known life, pretty much, doing this. And that's all she's ever known. Her goal, her desire to have her high school life be something special, be something important, one, not only mirrors two of our other characters, Hinata and our main character, whose name I'm also forgetting. I think it's Mari. Um, it not only mirrors their goals of wanting to do something special with their high school life, but it also shows what she truly wants. Again, it's not just friends. Because as she mentioned, she wants to do stuff like go to clubs and participate in events and stuff. It's not just about the friends. She wants fulfillment. She wants to feel like a normal girl, a normal high school girl. She just wants to be herself for once, not this celebrity that everyone looks up to. Not this shell of a daughter that her mother kind of forces, or not shell of a daughter. She is, that's more of how she feels. She doesn't want to be like this image of a daughter that her mother has for her. She wants fulfillment in her life. She wants to feel like, for once, something is just going right for her. She wants to feel like she's living her life and is able to be herself. So at the end here, when she says that line again, it contrasts the opening. It, it shows that she's no longer sorrowful. She's no longer even depressed, you could say. She's hopeful. She's happy. She's excited because she's made friends. These three girls who she had never met before and who she finds out aren't really even best friends themselves, have just recently met the, uh, themselves. She's found three girls who, who can connect with her and who clearly, especially on Mari's case, have shown caring for her in a way that no one else has. That's why she broke down crying. Because not only did basically her dream come true, but her dream came true. And it's getting me all freaking emotional thinking about it. Especially saying that line out loud. Like I had that in my mind, but saying it out loud, holy shit, the tears are starting to flow. Um, but seriously, I, I mean that. Not only did her dream come true, but her dream came true. And I think that's what this is really going to be about. Like, yes, uh, the one girl finding, her, trying to find her mother is an important aspect of this. But I think that the big theme of this is going to be these four girls connecting through this experience and truly becoming best friends. And, and so this contrast from the cold open and the ending of the episode really hits hard and like 
as I said, you saw at the end of the reaction when I started getting emotional. When It's because it was at that moment that I actually realized what they did. And it's not even just the thematic uh, contrast there. The, the, uh, the cold open and the ending also had other contrasts. The cold open had this new girl standing in the sun, very bright out, alone. That, that was a, that's a big aspect. She was alone. There was no one around her. The ending, she's in a darkened room. She's, it's, it's pretty cool in there, presumably. And she's with her f new friends. The contrast is heavy with those two moments in this episode. And I feel is, are really the points that make it. They're really the aspects of this episode. I mean, the, the rest of the stuff was great, but those are really the aspects of this episode that make it so effective and make it so heavy. And, and just great. Um, but let's get to the rest. So our group are still trying to figure out a way to get to Antarctica. And so they're searching for like any kind of information or hints uh, about high school students going. And they find out about this new girl whose name I think is Shirase or something like that. I don't know. I, I do not know. I'll, I'll get the names down. He not a, again is a super easy one to remember because of the connection to Naruto. Um, but yeah, so they find out about her, and that's when she suddenly appears. Like, because she had heard about them, she had seen them on the train and stuff, and so she appeared to them. She came to them to offer for uh, our Antarctica girl. <laughs> I cannot remember names. Uh, but to go in her place. Um, unfortunately, her mother slash manager appears. And yeah, there, it does things don't go exactly well. But eventually, after having a fight, uh, the mother and our new girl having a fight, the mother goes back and speaks with Antarctica and says that if she can convince her daughter to go, then the rest of them can go too. And so that's their new goal now. But they want to handle it properly. They, they don't want to force it. They end up meeting her outside of her hotel, and they go to a cafe together where they learn the reason why she doesn't want to go. Um, she doesn't want to go because of her lack of friendships. She wants to make this high school career, part of her life, this high school career, you could say, um, mean something. She wants it to be a point in her life where she can just be herself. And so she doesn't want to go to Antarctica because she feels like that's just more of the same. It's just following in her mother's plan for her life. And the moment when Mari hugs her is important because, again, as, as I kind of said before, it shows that someone is actually caring for her and caring about what she thinks. So that's great. Um, but yeah, nothing actually comes to the conversation. So they're trying to figure out how to bring it up again. Meanwhile, the new girl is thinking about everything, and she starts to realize that she actually does want to go. And so eventually when they get together again and they talk about, or they see each other again, she realizes after having the dream and everything, that she wants to go, but with them specifically. Not as a celebrity, as a friend to these girls who are the only people who have shown her true caring, true love. And I'm not saying that her mother doesn't love her. No, I actually think she does. I, I think like by her mother's reaction after the fight, I do think she actually does love her. But I also think that she wants her to be this celebrity. I think that she very much is kind of forcing this idea on her daughter. But I, I do think she loves her. Um, but I don't think she shows it a, a lot. And that's kind of the point here. These three girls, especially Mari, showed her the love that she so desired. It made her feel fulfilled. And because of that, 
she agreed to go with them. But as we saw on the call, she would only go if they came with her. She she laid down that line, and I'm so glad that she did because that's what I was that I was thinking uh, going into that. She like she's not gonna go unless they go with her. That's the only reason she'll want to go. And so they go to Tokyo, they go to this museum, and they just have fun learning about everything. I like how the Antarctica girl um, is super into penguins. Like, that that was just, like, a really cute moment. <laughs> um, oh, I can't, I can't wait to see how she reacts to actual penguins. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, this episode definitely hooked me in even more than I already was, and I was already very hooked in. Um, and, again, it's because of the new girl and the contrasting opening and closing to this episode. The way it just handled that was so excellently done. It was just so beautifully handled. It had a lot of depth, a lot of meaning, and did wonders for her character in, in such a short time. Uh, now, in my pre-thoughts, I did say that... Uh, I was worried about the pacing, especially with them introducing the character so quickly. And my initial thought was actually, I think I remember from last week saying that this new girl, maybe because she seemed shy and everything, maybe she wouldn't want to go with them at first, but ends up like kind of getting to know them and connecting with them and ends up going with them, uh, agreeing to go with them. That was my initial thought, but that's not really how it went down. That's not really how it went down at all. <laughs> um, so I, I was off on that. Um, but yeah, I, I really think that this episode was excellent. Um, even if it is like throwing these characters on us really quickly, I, I think it's still going well. Because the thing is, in terms of the pacing, by the th it's the third episode out of, what, 12, I think? And we now have our way to Antarctica. This is set. So now we just have to have them getting ready, preparing and everything, on top of actually going. And obviously there's going to be quite a few episodes there, I presume. So, I don't know, probably the next couple episodes are going to take place with them getting ready. Um, and then I'm, I'm thinking probably the second half of the series, starting in episode seven, is probably going to be them going to Antarctica. They'll probably have one or two episodes on the trip there, for the trip there, and then the rest will be in Antarctica. Um, that's my guess, at least. Um, which would be fine for the pacing as long as they continue to work it well, as long as they continue to handle things in a, well, really well-done way. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was, this was great. Um, and now that we've met all four of our main characters of our uh, main an Antarctic group, I, I can... I think definitively rank them in terms of favorites and all. Um, I would say that my favorite is still Hinata. I, I enjoy her personality. I think she's fun. She's funny. She's extremely likable. She has an adorable as fuck laugh. And I, I just think she's just my kind of character, honestly. But at the same, at the, and at the same time, she's not just a goofy, silly, ridiculous character. She actually does have depth and, well, character to her. Um, my second favorite character is, honestly, the new girl, who I definitely need to learn the name of. <laughs> um, and it's because of who she is and what she wants. This episode, and this might change, by the way. A lot of the rankings of these characters might change. Um, but she's my number two for now because of everything we saw in this episode with her. All, all that it built up with her. Her character. Her story. Who she is. What she wants. The contrast helped greatly. The contrasting opening and ending actually really helped me love her character that much more. 
Um, third would probably be Antarctica. Um, again, I can't think of her real name right now. <laughs> um, she's definitely my third, and I've loved her straight from episode one. Again, because of her character, I, I love her uh, little personality quirk that she has a hard time talking to people, that she's really socially anxious and everything, especially because I relate to it. I have social anxiety. I mean, I have anxiety in general, but especially in social situations. Um, even when I'm with family, I tend to be very, like, off on my own, doing my own thing and not talking much. Because I, I just get really anxious around people. The only place I think, like, publicly that I'm not like that is conventions. Um, church, my current church is getting better. I'm getting better with that. Um, because my current church rocks. <laughs> but conventions are really the only place where I am truly in my element and not anxious at all. And it didn't always used to be like that. I actually, like when I first started doing conventions, I was super anxious. But after years of doing them now, it's like, it's so comforting and relaxing and pretty much everything the opposite of anxious to be there. Um, but yeah, I totally understand her character quirks there. I, I definitely relate to her a lot in that. Um, she's also just really cute. I love her drive. I, I love her apparent uh, uh, obsession with penguins. That's adorable. Um, yeah, she's just a, a really cute character, and I just really like her, uh, which obviously makes Mari my number four, and that's by no means saying that I dislike Mari. Mari is exceptionally kind, generous, and just so, so fucking just nice. I, nice and kind are technically two different things. Um, you can be kind without being nice and vice versa. Um, she is just so pure hearted and so beautiful in, in her actions and her attitude. She's so affectionate and loving and wanting to share that love with others. And I think that's amazing. I think more people should be like that. The only reason she's my number four is because I just like the other girls more. Um, but I do like all of them. I think that these are four very good main characters. Um, and this is another one of those shows where I really didn't think I was going to like it. But I'm ending up really liking it. Not as much as other shows, like, lately. Like, not as much as Free, by any means. Um, I wouldn't say that it's as much as Astra Lost in Space, either. Um, and it's definitely not as much as 12 Forever, which I actually started out not liking that much outside of Butt Witch, but have actually grown to love thanks to how its episodes progress. Um, but yeah, this is definitely uh, one of those shows that I did not think I would like and ended up really liking. Um... And I hope it continues to impress me like this. Um, but for the meantime, tell me what you thought of this episode down in the comments below, and thank you so much. Uh, I apologize again for last week's uh, fiasco with the uh, reaction stuff not actually recording the audio. Um, so I apologize for you guys not even being able to see my episode 2 reaction and stuff, but yeah. Not really much of anything I could do about that other than re-recording it, and I, I don't like to do that. I don't like to record non-blind reactions. I, I don't believe in non-blind reactions. I just think that that's a waste of time, personally. Um, but yeah, I apologize for that, and hopefully it'll never happen again. So yeah, tell me your thoughts down below, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time. Hey everyone, Connie here, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. If you want to check out any of my social media links and more, please check them out over to the side. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave those down below. In the meantime, though, thank you so much once again for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.